So far in our series of videos, we have covered most of the foundational properties of the real number system, the properties that are distinctive that we consider the defining properties of the real numbers. We're now ready to list a couple more. Let's start with this thing called the Archimedean property. Recall that the real number system is an extension of the integers, also the rationals. And this result says something about the way that that extension works, something about how the integers and the rationals sit inside the real line. Part one says that if you look at the sequence of fractions, one half, one third, one quarter, etc., then there's no real number between all of those fractions and zero. We paraphrase this by saying that there are no infinitesimal real numbers, no infinitely small real numbers. And part two says that no matter how far out along the real line you go, you never get past the integers. This second property can be paraphrased by saying that there are no infinitely large real numbers. Now these two forms of the Archimedean property are equivalent. If you prove one, then you have proved the other just by taking one over that. So the properties might seem self-evident to you, but they do need to be stated and at some point justified. And actually, when I say self-evident, I'm not sure that all students really believe them anyway. So I have to really clarify this. In our earliest videos, I talked about some students I've had with a very different perception of our number systems. And in fact, there are perfectly valid number systems which are a lot like the reals. They're hard to tell the difference until you look closely. Some of them are non-Archimedean. They have infinitely large and infinitely small elements. I could refer here to the hyperreals. I've mentioned them before. The hyperreals are a number system with numbers that are infinitely large, infinitely small. There are distinct numbers that are infinitely close in the hyperreals. We don't spend a lot of time talking about such crazy things as the hyperreals, right? Why don't we? Well, Tevya knows why. <clears throat> tradition, tradition. Well, the Archimedean property is just something that you could add to our list of axioms, our growing list of axioms for the real numbers. But turns out, if you're going to assume the least upper bound property, then you don't need to list the Archimedean property also, because we can prove one from the other. That's, in fact, what we use. The least upper bound property is what we use to prove the Archimedean property. So let's go ahead and do that. And I'll prove part two first. And I'll do that by contradiction. So assuming that statement two fails, that would mean that there's a real number B, which is an upper bound for all the natural numbers. So according to the least upper bound property, there would have to be a supremum for all the natural numbers. And I could call that number C. Now C minus one is less than C. So C minus one cannot be an upper bound for the natural numbers, right? It's less than the least upper bound, so then it can't be an upper bound. So what does that mean? It means that there is a natural number n which exceeds c minus 1. But then you can just add 1 to both sides. You'll get that the natural number n plus 1 is bigger than c. So c is no longer an upper bound for the natural numbers. That would be a contradiction. So with that, we have a proof of part 2. I said part one is equivalent, but just for the sake of having another practice in writing proofs, let's write out the proof of part one. Now, according to the part two that we just proved, there's a natural number n bigger than one over a. Take one over n, and that would then be less than a, and that completes the proof. If the previous result described how the integers sit inside the reals, then let's say something more about how the rationals sit inside the reals. And the most important thing to say here is that between any two real numbers, 
you can find at least one rational. According to that property, what we say is that the rational numbers are dense in the real number system. To prove this, pick any two real numbers, a and b, with a less than b. Our job is to find a rational number in between a and b. By the Archimedean property, we can get a positive integer n bigger than 1 over b minus a. Also, there exist integers bigger than n times a, also by the Archimedean property. So, we can choose m to be the least integer bigger than n a. Here I'm using well ordering from the earlier video. So the set of integers exceeding n a is a non-empty subset bounded below at least. So it has a least element m. Now n a is less than m, but also m minus 1 is less than or equal to n a, and that is by the minimality of m. And the last thing we wrote just says a is less than m over n. And the previous inequality to that could be rewritten as m over n is less than or equal to n a plus 1 over n, which is equal to a plus 1 over n, which is less than a plus b minus a, which by the way equals b. So now I have both inequalities that I need, which shows that the fraction m over n is in the open interval a, b which is exactly what we set out to prove.